Erica, young adults, Laura Toggs here, and it is such a privilege to be able to bring a word today. And I am privileged that I was invited. I have to say, I love Phil and Lucinda, your pastors. They are my pastors too, because they were my youth pastors. And so I feel like they will forever be my, my youth pastor. Uh, I love Lucinda. She is such a role model and Phil as well. I just, I grew up on their teaching. I grew up on everything that they imparted into my life. And, um, and I believe that I'm standing here today because of uh, their input into my life. And so, so grateful for them. And I believe that today I have a word, uh, I have a word uh, from God for you. And isn't it amazing that I can be here in Sydney, Australia, and you could be over there in South Africa, and yet God can speak through me, through his word, a word that is timely and in season for you. I think that is so powerful, and I believe that that's what's going to take place today. And so I want to uh, open my message with 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And it says this, for God, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now, I'm just going to say that one more time just to make sure that you got that. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now, if that resonated with you, why don't you go ahead and put in the comment section, that was good. That was good. My message today is titled this, I've got the power. I've got the power. Do you realize how powerful you are? If you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord of your life, you are powerful. And I'm not talking, you know, genie in a bottle, powerful, rub a lamp and Robin Williams or Will Smith appears to grant you three wishes. I'm not talking that kind of cosmic power. I'm talking the reality of salvation through Jesus working in and through your life. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of salvation the power of salvation. I'm talking the power of redemption. I'm talking the fullness of forgiveness, that we can receive grace and mercy for our sins. It is powerful. Do you realize, do you realize the power of prayer? The power of prayer, that when we pray, we talk to God, that there is an exchange that takes place between heaven and earth, and we get to communicate with God. It is powerful. And as we make that exchange, that divine exchange, things change. Things on earth change. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of worship, the power of worship, that when we worship God, it's not just songs. It's not just pretty songs. It is um, the presence of God. It is magnifying the name of God. It is incredible that when we worship, we invite the presence of God. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of the word, the power of our Bibles, that when we open the Bible, it's not just ink on paper, it's not just words, but it comes alive. The word comes alive and it reads us, it reads our lives and it brings about change as we apply it into our everyday lives. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of being filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is is powerful. And we have been given an incredible inheritance in receiving Jesus. Philippians 3 verse 10 says this, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power, the power of his resurrection. I love it in Deuteronomy 28 verse 13. It says this, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. In the message translation, it says that you will be the top dogs, the top dogs. (laughs) I like that. 
And so I want to encourage you today. I want to remind you just how powerful you are because this is the promise of God that we have inherited this power because of Christ living in us and dwelling in us. Us. It is the reality of the gospel. It is the reality of being a Christian that we've got this power. And yet, and yet, sometimes I, I think that as believers, we forget. We forget that we are the head and not the tail. We forget that we are above and not beneath. We forget that we have this advantage, that we have this holy anointing, that we have this great advantage. We forget. And so if today I can remind you of that, then then that's what I want to do. That's what I believe God wants to do. And um, I want to read today from Ephesians, Ephesians 1, where, um, where Paul, Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus, And he writes that God would impart to us the riches of the spirit through wisdom and revelation, that our eyes would be open and enlightened to the hope of our calling and that we would experience the immeasurable power of God, that our lives would be a living advertisement of the power of God that that is at work within us. And so if I could just read this to you quickly. Ephesians 1 verse 15, it says this, because of this, since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your tender love toward all his devoted ones, my heart is always full and overflowing with thanks to God for you as I constantly remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with me, with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy ones. And I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of his immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. And now, and now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised, not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. Can I please hear an amen? Amen. That is powerful. Do you realize the immeasurable power that is within you? It is the same power that raised Christ from the dead that has been imparted into you. It is powerful. And it wouldn't be right if I didn't share with you a story about my son, Jack. Now, Jack, we are working on his salvation. He is a work in progress. But I'll tell you what. He has us wrapped around his finger. He is the coolest kid ever. And and I wish you could meet him because he would definitely make you laugh. He is hilarious. And so I've been um, telling him about about Jesus. I've been been encouraging him to learn uh, stories in the Bible. And recently uh, he said to me, Mom, do you think that I don't know about Jesus? I know about Jesus. And this is what he said. He said, step one, God. Step two, light. Step three, day and night and ocean and land. Step four, he was going uh, man and woman and then snake and then apple. I'm not joking. This is what he said next. And then Moses slayed a giant. (laughs) And then he said, and then Noah, Noah died on the cross. This is, this is my son, Jack. He is hilarious. But, and for the record, I set him straight. I did step in and teach him something about the word of God and Jesus. Anyway, um, but this is Jack. But 
as I've been reading, as I've been reading through these incredible Old Testament stories, I've been so encouraged by heroes, heroes who were just everyday, ordinary young men and young women of God. They were limited. They had all things coming against them. And yet they understood this power, this supernatural power that they had by being God's people, by being God's people, powerful. And this is what I want to say to you today is that you are Moses. You are Moses who led the people of Israel out of Egypt split the oceans, walked them into their future. You are Moses and you are David. David, the young, unlikely king who was not the first choice or the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth or seventh choice. And yet he was anointed to be king. And he, although, and although he was small in stature, he slayed a giant. And you are Joseph who overcame betrayal and saved a nation from famine. And you are Esther, where are all my girls at, who risked it all to know her for such a moment as this, her for such a time as this, that she would stand before uh, before the king on behalf of, of, of her people who would be saved. And you are Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego who refused to bow down and worship another god who stood in the fire. You are these heroes. You are these everyday, ordinary men and women of God who even though they have limitations, even though they had things coming against them, they tapped in to the immeasurable power of God. And it is powerful. It is powerful. And so could it be? Could it be, could it be, could it be that just maybe, just maybe as the church, as as God's people, that we've forgotten, we've forgotten just how powerful we are, how powerful we are as God's people. It says in the scriptures that the people of Israel limited, limited God. In Psalm 73 verse 42, it says, they did not remember his power the day that he redeemed them from the oppressor. And I just want to say in in, in 2020, here we are, what an insane year that we're all living, that we're collectively uh, living together. There is a global pandemic happening. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, We're living in isolation. There are matters of injustice that are just heart-wrenching and so painful to to process. There's so much going on in our world today. And I just feel that as the church, as God's people, just maybe, just maybe it's not our moment. It's not our time to forget this truth, to forget how powerful we are. And I think, you know, in a, in a time where fear is consuming our culture, where anxiety, where anxiety is crippling more and more people, where depression is plaguing souls and taking lives, where differences and hatred um, are splitting up families and friends and churches and businesses, and there are so many divides, where the earth is groaning, literally. Uh, and like I said, where there is so much injustice all across the earth. I'm thinking that right now is not the time to forget the immense and immeasurable power of God that dwells. And I'm not here to highlight all the doom and gloom, but I'm here because I believe that it's time that as a generation, as young adults, as young people, we rise up and we remember that we remember that this power is invested into us. And it's time for us to rise up and wage a war of faith in this generation. It is powerful, that we would understand that we can be living, living advertisements of God's power. And so what happens? What happens when we forget the immeasurable power within us? I think this is what happens. Number one, we lose our confidence. We lose our confidence. 
It says in Hebrews 10 verse 35, it says, So do not throw away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. And I just was thinking about this and I think we don't just throw away our confidence. I think that what happens is perhaps we misplace our confidence. We place our confidence in the wrong things. And um, I was, I was reading uh, direct references to confidence in the scriptures. And in Philippians 1 verse 16, it says, but I am confident of this very thing that he He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 4 verse 16, it says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that when we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And Proverbs 14 verse 26, it says, In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have refuge. And so this is what I believe. I believe that we misplace our confidence or lose our confidence when we place our confidence in ourselves. Self-confidence. It sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds amazing, but I don't know about you. Anytime that I put my confidence in myself, it's pretty shaky. It's pretty risky. And, and yet these scriptures show us that it's not about putting confidence in ourselves, but it's like this, but I am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work or, or let us draw near confidence to the throne of grace or in the Lord, in the Lord, there is strong confidence. And I think that we lose our confidence when we, when we stop putting our confidence in God And when we start putting our confidence in ourselves or the things of this world, I think sometimes we can put our confidence in our jobs or our families or our calling. Um, And then what happens is, is that we lose our jobs. We lose our jobs and our confidence is gone. Or our calling doesn't look like we thought it would and our confidence is gone. Or people let us down and it hurts and it's discouraging and our confidence is gone. And I used to think that confidence was a personality type, but now I know. Now I know that confidence is not a personality type. Confidence is trust in God, is placing your trust in God. Amen. And what happens when we remember? What happens when we remember the immeasurable power that is within us. I believe this. We know our authority. We know our authority. In Australia, we have these kind of radio, TV personalities. Uh, These guys, their names are Hamish and Andy, and they are hilarious, and I am a huge fan. And um, and they they were explaining uh, recently power moves. Now, if you haven't heard of power moves, power moves are things that you can use in everyday life that give you the air of authority, that give you the edge over other people. So for example, this is, this is a power move. When my wife gets mad at me, sometimes I like to go into the fridge and pantry and tighten the lids to all the jars and bottles. Therefore, she has to speak to me at some point. That is a power move. Or this one. When a guest arrives at your door, ask them to remove their shoes before they walk in, but keep yours on. That is a power move. Or this one, this is the most brutal one that there is. When introducing a friend, I like to make finger quotation marks in the air when announcing their job title. This is Karen. She's a brain surgeon. (laughs) Or I like to say this. This is Pete. He is a pastor, which is, that's really mean. Sorry, Pete. It wouldn't be right if I didn't make fun of him a little bit. That is a power move, a power move. Everybody knows those people who, who work those power moves. They, we've all got those people in our lives. Martin Luther, Martin Luther, there's this incredible story about, about, about Martin Luther. He says that one night he woke up in the middle of the night to the devil at the foot of his bed. 
He took a look at him and he said, oh, it's only you. And he rolled over and went back to sleep. That is a power move, a power move. You have the advantage. We need to understand that when we have Jesus in in us, when we understand the reality of being God's people, we have the advantage and we can work the power moves. Sanger Samways, I know that some of you know him. If not, he is a, a reverend, a theologian, a man of God, a respected man of God in our church here in Australia. And he says this, you can tell your God how big your problem is, or you can tell your problem how big your God is. That is a power move. And so when the enemy throws his devices at you, we need to understand our authority. We need to remember the authority that we have in being God's people. We have the advantage. We have the authority. We need to take dominion. And I believe that we need to talk it and we need to walk it. We need to talk it. So when life throws stuff at you, and it will, is life difficult and real? Yes. Is there an enemy that hates your guts? Yes. Is life going to present us with uncertainty and the unexpected and things that aren't going our way? Yes. But in that moment, we have the air of authority. And I'll tell you what it is. It is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, it changes everything. And I believe that we need to clear the air. And what I mean by that is that we can clear the air. We can change the atmosphere with the name of Jesus. That when things get hard, or maybe, you know, maybe you're walking into an exam, a university exam, and and you're filled with anxiety, you can just speak out the name of Jesus, and it changes how you see things. It changes how you're thinking. It changes. It brings peace. That is the power of the name of Jesus. Or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night, and your soul is depleted, or perhaps you're filled with fear. It's there. We can quietly speak out the name of Jesus and it changes things. And I want to tell you something. We need to talk it. We need to speak it. We need to allow it to come out of our mouths. Speak the name of Jesus because it changes. It changes things. When we understand our authority, we understand that we can change. We can change the atmosphere and it is powerful. And that's the power of song. The power of song is that we sing to God. We sing to God and we speak of who he is. Not because God doesn't know who he is. He knows who he is. But when we sing who God is, it reminds us. It edifies our soul. It reminds our soul that God is in control, that he is supreme, that he is powerful, that he is magnificent, that he is in control. And it reminds us who God is in our lives. It is powerful. And I believe we need to walk it. We need to walk in authority. Matthew 28, is the, it is the great commission. And Jesus says this, he said, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion even to the end of age. And I love this because Jesus, who has all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth is inferring to us that that same power, that same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that is within us. So go, he says, go and walk in it. It is powerful. And I love this, and I want to finish with this. Luke 10, Luke 10 verse 19 says, Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority, all my authority to trample over 
his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power that Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing, nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Isn't that powerful? And so I want to say to you, you've got the power. You've got the power in receiving Jesus Christ into your life. That same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that is living within you. And so as you go, as you do your thing, as you face the challenges in your life head on, understand, remind yourself who God is, who's in control, who has the advantage. It's powerful. And we've got that power in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, power message tonight by a powerful woman on this Women's Day. If you actually love this message tonight, I want you to put power in the comment section because that was unbelievable. I'm sure you guys are blessed. We are thankful that we had Pastor Laura Tox bring the final word tonight to 1825 conference and um, hey, and to church tonight. So I want to I want to take an opportunity and I want to speak to you about one thing. It's the name of Jesus, the power that is the name in the name of Jesus. Pastor Laura spoke about making some power moves tonight. We are making power moves, young adults. We are making power moves. We're taking back our confidence. We're taking back the authority. We're standing in everything that Jesus has for you. But to do that, you need to make a decision tonight to step into everything that Jesus is, into His salvation, into making Him your Lord and your Savior. So tonight, after this incredible message, I want to take an opportunity. And um, if you've never had the opportunity to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. I don't know what's happening in your life. I don't know if this message spoke to you. Maybe, maybe you've been powerless. Maybe you've been trying to do things in your own confidence. Or maybe you've just lost all authority of doing things on your own. But tonight, there's an authority. There's a name of Jesus. The name that's above every other name. The name that's above all your sin, above everything. All you need to do is take Him as your Lord and Savior. And I love that Laura said this. It's unfair because there's nothing you have to do but just believe tonight. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the grave, you will be saved. Not by your good works, but by grace and grace alone. So if you're sitting there tonight, I want to give you this one opportunity and I want to pray for you. If you want to make Jesus your your personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to pray and you can pray after me. And it's as simple as that. It's a prayer opening your heart saying, Jesus, come and live inside of my heart right now. So I'm going to pray with you guys as we end this message. Lord, I thank you that you gave us Jesus. I thank you that in this moment we can come to him and surrender our lives, Lord. Lord, we might have done things in our own strength and uh, tried to do things in our own confidence and authority, but tonight we want to give you all authority, Lord. So I thank you tonight, Lord, as we give our hearts to you. Lord, that you will come to every young adult and every person on the stream right now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come settle on them, Lord, that they will get this unfair power that is within them, the same power that raised Jesus from the grave now is available to each and every person here, Lord. So tonight, Lord, we declare that you are Lord and you are Savior. Come and be our Lord and our best friend. Walk with us day in and day out as we turn our focus to you. We thank you, Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen come on congratulations to each and every one of you making that decision tonight and uh, as a church we want to celebrate with you one thing we can do to connect with you after a decision like this is go on the little jesus tab that's it press it go put your details in there because the one thing we want to do is connect with you in that we're also going to send you a 21 devotional a next step it's in all language you can literally choose your language it's in afrikaans in english in Corsa, I'm working on my click there in the in Zulu. So literally go do that and it will be sent to you and it will start this 21 day journey because tonight you went not just from being, you know, in this place to that place, but literally from death to life. It's a decision to have life and life in abundance. You're starting this journey tonight. So we want to do this with you. Congratulations. Everybody say congratulations in the comment section. 
This was incredible. 1825 conference. We are forever grateful that we can do it online in 2020. And hey, next year we might just gather to, together again. Come on, we're going to pray for that. And we just want to thank our pastors, Phil and Lucinda, that they gave us the opportunity to do this for all the thousands of young adults' lives been impacted. And everyone who tuned in tonight on a Sunday night, come on, congratulations. This is amazing. So your next step is join a group because even though we're in lockdown, you can still connect with people on Zoom. There's people waiting for you. There's people who want to meet you. You do not have to do lockdown alone. Get in a group. Check in the comment section down below or actually on the tab there's for groups. You can literally connect with someone right now tonight. So, hey, everyone else, we are partying out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. I hope you are rested after this weekend. I'm going to get the team in here. So, so, lo, he's so with us. We're going to party out of here. Have the best Sunday. Go have a McDonald's burger. Get a pizza. Do whatever you need to do because tomorrow's holiday. That is true. It's a public holiday on us. Enjoy, guys.